Today I'm going to talk about spiritual warfare and how we can live a victorious life. Everybody and welcome to Sunday's video. I'm going to get right to the point and share with you what has been on my heart and on my mind. The day after I got home from the hospital, I was working out in my canning garage. Now I was really tired. I looked somewhat haggard, but I felt like God had a message for me to give all of you. And so I made that video, but I didn't upload it. It was on my camera. But in the next two days, I just felt like maybe I shouldn't share that video. You know how I always talk about how I always double think myself when it comes to a Sunday video. I looked at the video and thought, oh, Tessie, you look so haggard, so tired. And I thought, what would people think about the message that I wanted to give? Because it's something very unusual and different for me and something I've never talked about on my channel. I succumbed to peer pressure. So I thought, I'm just going to delete that video and I'm just going to upload one of my regular videos for a Sunday. Thank goodness I didn't delete it. And here's why. So I'm out today raking my leaves and I was really tired so I thought I'd go in the house and I thought I'd watch a YouTube video. I clicked on one of the preachers that I really like. It was an intriguing title to it but it wasn't about spiritual warfare so I thought. I watched his video and my heart started pounding and I realized that I almost was going to succumb to peer pressure and not share what was on my heart because he talked exactly what I was thinking about so many days before. No, it was God nudging me and telling me, Tessie, you have to show that video. <laughs> and I want to add something a little bit to this before you see the original video. I wanted to say that what he was saying is when people come to attack you or do things or you feel the attack coming on you, you know that you need to put that and place it back to where it came from. You don't accept it. You don't acknowledge it. You take it back to where it came from. Spiritual warfare is something that is very unique. You know, you have that heavy feeling. You know when the spiritual warfare is coming against you. You know, it's not about you stubbing your toe or about something minor in your life. It's just when things get compiled upon you and you just feel depression and a heaviness upon you. That is spiritual warfare. And as Christians, we are to denounce that. We are to take authority over that. You know, we are living in the light. We have the Lord in our hearts. And so we overcome that, but we need to proclaim that we overcome that. And we need to denounce that and don't allow it to take place in our life. This video was going to be deleted. And because of watching, just randomly watching a sermon, I was convinced now more than ever that that video was anointed. I hope that someone is touched by the video that I placed. I know I look really tired, but you know what? God speaks. He doesn't care what we look like. He doesn't care where we are in life. When God speaks, we listen. And I almost, almost shut him out. So I sure hope that this message reaches to someone because I do feel like now that it is out there for someone and we are to claim victory victory. So let me know if my message reached to you in some way and let me know because it's being bold. I'm taking a stand. I'm having courage. Then I know without a shadow of a doubt that it was meant to be aired. Thank you guys and I hope you get something out of this video. In the hospital, you know time stands still and it seems like you're immune to the outside world. And it gave me a lot of things to think about in life. And today I'm going to talk to you about spiritual warfare and how to claim victory over it. Somebody said recently to me that I should do a little less preaching, a little more homesteading. And while six days of the week my videos are geared towards being a homemaker, homesteading, and saving money, my Sundays have always been my heart to hearts. That's how it always was and that's how it always will be. And so a few of you who are on this right now and don't like the heart to hearts, then you don't need to watch them. But through my heart to hearts, I feel like I'm really giving you all a glimpse of my life. And in turn, they are very popular with most people. I'm not a preacher, and some would say that I am a teacher. I don't see myself as a teacher. But I wanted to share with you things that I go through in life, and in turn, maybe it could bless you 
or help you, or maybe give you a nugget of wisdom every once in a while. Spiritual warfare is something that affects all of us that are Christians. Spiritual warfare is a name that's thrown out there a lot. But what is spiritual warfare, and how do we become victorious over it? Whether you have an addictions of eating too much, or addictions of lying or gossiping, whether your addictions are spending money too much, maybe you have a temper, or maybe you have other issues in your life. When you decide in your life that you want to make things better, and you're asking God to help you, and you're asking God to reveal things to you, a lot of times you're on the path of making your life better and learning about the Lord more. But so many times when this happens, stumbling blocks will come your way, like we spoke in last Sunday's video. But sometimes it's called spiritual warfare. And let me explain. You know when you live a mediocre life, in other words, where you don't really read your Bible, you really don't have anything to do much about the Lord, you are happy with where you're at, you're not trying to be a better person, you may have issues in your life, but you really aren't working on them. Satan has, he has no interest in any of that because he likes you just the way you are. You're comfortable in your life. You're not trying to learn more about God. You're not trying to change your life in any positive way. And so a lot of times you're left alone. But what happens in your life when you decide you want to make some changes? Whatever those changes may be, they may be physical, they may be spiritual, but whatever you're trying to do things better in your life and you're trying to give God the glory for it or asking the Lord to help you, so many times spiritual warfare comes in. How many times have you been tempted to do something that you really are working hard against that temptation? How many times you're starting to read your Bible and starting to pray more when things come up in your life that distract you and take away from your temptations? take away from your reading of the Bible. How many times has this happened? Or how many times in your life have you all of a sudden been bombarded with all kinds of things? And you're like, Lord, why is this happening to me now? Maybe you just had a long stretch of peace in your life and everything is just so great. You know it's easy to praise the Lord when everything is going good your way. But when you praise the Lord when everything's going bad, a lot of times, Satan will make things worse. So why does this happen? I can't give you all the answers. Why do bad things happen to good people? That is something I will never be able to answer. And that is a question a lot of people have asked me. But I do know one thing, that God gives us strength. And through it all, that we can use it for His glory and use it to help others. This week, I've been bombarded with a lot of things in my life. A lot of things. Not only did I have to deal with the sickness of a grandchild, but I had to deal with some other issues, issues that were long gone and I thought were buried, but they came cropping back up. And I do believe it's because I decided in my heart that I was not going to allow any negativity coming my way. And guess what came my way? Negativity! We all face these things, and for everyone it's different. There's not a cookie-cutter answer, and there's not a cookie-cutter problem for all of us. You know the things that you are going through in your life. Maybe you have a health condition, and it was being better, and you were feeling so happy because you thought things were doing so much better, then all of a sudden it gets worse. Satan does that to try to discourage you. It's obvious to him when you're trying to be a light in a dark world or you're trying to better your life and given more peace in your life, Satan will do these things because he wants to destroy your life. Anything that has to do with confusion, anything that has to do with negativity is always because of Satan. But the Lord allows it to happen sometimes. Sometimes the Lord allows it to build your character, to build your strength, to give your testimony. I do wish in life everything would be easy. I wish that nobody would have to suffer. Nobody would have to go through temptations in their life. But then we wouldn't have much strength, now would we, if everything would go our way. Sitting in the hospital, I realized a lot of these things. And if you count it all joy, and you still have that hope, things will change. 
Satan uses things to get to you. Satan knows how to get to you. And everybody, it's different. For some people, Satan will get to you in ways that are emotional. Sometimes he will get to you in ways that are physical. And always he gets to you in spiritual ways. But once we realize our weaknesses in our life and realize when these things come our way, we can denounce them and we can hold the truths that the Lord has given us. There's power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. So we hold fast to all of these things. And when trials come our way and tribulations come our way, we speak with authority against those things. We fill our life, we fill our minds, we fill our hearts with positive things, and we listen to good things in life and prayer and praise music. We fill our hearts with good positive preaching, reading the Bible. We fill our hearts with all of these things. Because when things come at us at the, out of the blue, sometimes we're blindsided and we step back and think, what the world? And we start thinking, God, why are you making this happen? God, and we blame God for things. But in all due reality, a lot of times things are put upon us to build our character. They're put, they're put upon us maybe because we've done things in the past. Maybe we started things with people and now we want to make amends and it doesn't work that way. And sometimes we are totally innocent on things that happen in our life. Sometimes we have no clue why things are happening. Bad things come your way. It's not because God has left you or God no longer loves you. That's what Satan wants you to think. He wants you to be discouraged. When I prayed about Sierra, right in the very beginning when she was, went to the IC unit, I said we have to have hope because without hope we have nothing. And our hope is in the Lord. And He gives us strength and encourages us. That's why I'm so grateful for this channel. Because this channel has helped a lot of things in my life, and I know it's helped a lot of people. Because I share my failures and struggles. It's not all about me, but it's my channel where I share things that are happening in my life. And through that, I'm hoping that others are blessed as well. The Bible says we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but it's spiritual. And so when somebody comes your way and they say things that hurt your feelings, realize where that's coming from and claim victory over it. And in turn, you will be victorious. Sometimes we're in the valleys of life and sometimes we're in the mountaintops. That's how it's always going to be. But through it all, we can learn from these. Anything that happens in our life, we can learn life lessons. We can count it all joy because God can give us peace that passes all understanding. You know this world, the only way they can find peace is through drugs and alcohol and sex and spending money and living a life that's a hard-hearted life is what my mama would say. But God has an answer to all of that and he's asking you to let him in and he will give you the peace that none of that will give you. Yes, it may give you peace for a moment, but when all of that's said and done, your turmoil is even worse than it was. Maybe some of you find this as preaching, but it's sharing my life with all of you. And these are my Sunday heart to hearts because these are lessons that I am learning. I am not preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself because I'm sharing with you things that I have to work on. Sometimes I can go into self-pity mode. We all have. And I will say, well, why is this happening to me? Well, why are they doing this to me? Or why is this happening, God? Why aren't you answering this prayer? And I realize that sometimes prayers aren't answered for a reason. But we hold on and we keep having the faith. That is what the whole core of Christianity is. Having faith. 
having faith in something that you cannot see. But in turn, when you have faith, you can see miracles that happen in your life. Miracles do happen. But are we quiet enough to realize when they do? I've seen miracles happen in my life. I've seen many miracles. Some of them were physical miracles. Some of them were emotional miracles. Having a YouTube channel and all of you I see as an, a miracle in my life. Because honestly, I need all of you. I can't do it alone. I need your love and your guidance and telling me when I've gone the wrong way and helping guiding me back to the right way. We need each other. Nobody should go on this earth alone. That's why God gave us all of us. We are the body of Christ. In essence, we are the church. The church isn't a building with four walls and a door. The church is the body of Christ. And we are to gather together. And that's what we're doing. And I thank you guys for everything. Thank you for rejoicing with me. Thank you for crying with me. Thank you for being there with me in all ways. And I'm going to end today like I'm going to be ending all of my heart to hearts. Because it's not about me. It's about all of you. So let's bow our heads or have a moment of silence and say a prayer. Father God, I ask that you would be with each and every person, Lord. I'm asking, Lord, that you would give people peace that passes all understanding in their life. You know the trials and the struggles that they are going through right now. They may be physical, they may be emotional, they may be spiritual, they may be financial. Father God, I'm asking that you would give them courage and strength. And I'm asking for miracles to happen in people's lives. I'm asking for you to give people a testimony that they can go out and share their life with other people. Father God, I ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Thank you guys for watching this Heart to Heart. And I can't wait to share with you tomorrow. It seems like, thank the Lord, we're back on track. <laughs> Homestead Tessie is back with some fun videos ahead. And I'm going to leave you with this song. I hope it blesses you like it's blessed me throughout the years. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears, God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. Bigger than all the shadows that fall across my path, God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. Bigger than all confusions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears, God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. Bigger than all the giants of pain and unbelief, God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. Bigger than any hang-ups, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. If you enjoyed this video, this is one in a couple in a series that I have been working on these last couple Sundays. Here the videos are in case you missed them. Take care everyone. God bless you and we'll see you guys tomorrow. And let me know in the comments below, can you relate with this video? Can you relate with the things that I'm talking about? What are some lessons that you've learned? What are some of your nuggets of wisdom that you could give everyone? Your words are so wise and I'm so thankful for all of you in my life.